welcome to our series of PowerCore training videos. This video is going to cover the system menu. From the home screen, we can hit the menu button, enter our passcode, and hit enter. And there's our main uh, screen for menus, of one of them. So the system menu is, menu is right on top. It's already highlighted for us. Once it's highlighted, you hit the enter button and get into it. So in this menu, we can change date and time, the units, um, metric English type units for temperature, level, flow, and pressure. The language, uh, there's several languages in here. You hit enter, you can see all the ones available. Uh, French, German, Spanish, Italian. Back button, get back out to the system menu. The brightness on the display, uh, which depending on if you're indoors or outdoors, most of these go outdoors, but you can fuss with that number. Usually out of the box works fine. The contrast uh, usually works okay at the, at the factory setting, but if you need to adjust it, this is where you would do it. Backlight control, you can turn the backlight completely off uh, by getting into this set point. Disable or enable, it, it defaults to enable. The beeper, uh, which uh, beeps anytime you get an alarm, defaults to on, but you can turn that off. Active fault reminder is a, as long as you don't set the, uh, the fault, it will come back, I think it's a minute for uh, alarms or warnings and then every 30 seconds for shutdown that comes back and tells you that you've had this occur and it defaults to disable but if you want to be reminded that, that a fault occurred and you haven't reset anything yet you can you can choose enable for that the standby timer uh, defaults to 30 minutes it can be uh, set to any time you want and if a button isn't pushed or a start signal is not received uh, for 30 minutes in this case the backlight and the heater turn off and it saves uh, battery consumption by hitting any button or if a start signal occurs if you're in auto uh, it go it leaves standby and goes back to normal operation service reminders you have many of them in here uh, uh, oil oil filter um, all kinds of, of service reminders in here that you can say yes or no to. Um, belt life, battery life, all these have certain hours and these are based on running hours. So for instance, on battery life, if I put in 500 hours in this uh, in this set point, 500 running hours later, I would get a, a, a notice on my display saying that check the battery life. Okay. So if you go back to the top of this though, you can show the service screens on the front on the very front, where we went through those screens in the video number one, you can have the service reminder shown on front to show how much time is remaining on them. So it's kind of a kind of a handy feature if you want to use those or you don't need to use them at all. Service reminders, ECU faults. If the ECU supports this feature, you can clear active faults and clear stored ECU faults if the ECU accepts the command. Auto manual. You can, uh, the first set point here, you can have this controller just be in manual only and, and disable auto altogether. It, it's, it's disabled, but if you, if you set enabled to that, it would only work in manual. Power up auto or manual, you can have it either, either way, where you can, when it, when it initially powers up, if you want it to go straight to auto or straight to manual, you can do that. It defaults to manual. Um, auto, uh, when, when you go, in, on the front, when you select auto for manual, it asks, do you really mean it? And you have to hit the enter button. If you want to skip that step, you would just say no to show auto start uh, confirmation. Green LED. There are three LEDs on the side of this controller, a red, amber, and green. The red and amber are pretty standard with electronic diesels, uh, or, you know, when they throw an amber code or red code, or we have an external fault that's a, actually a shutdown or a warning the red or amber LED lights up. The green LED uh, 
from the factory defaults to when you're in auto, that green LED will come on. You can also have it come on. Your choice is running loaded. So if you want to know that the engine is through the warm up, through the fill mode, through everything else, and it's going to actually do some work, you can light the green LED at that point, but it defaults to in, anytime you're in auto. Restore factory defaults. We covered this on our first video. That's, that's kind of a do-over. You go back to square one and restore all the factory settings and lose anything that you put in there yourself. Event history. You can view the event history and clear the event history. Let's see if we have any events in here. Now yeah, we've got a few from, from me using it. Um, and it, it stores up to 32 events. So uh, you can clear that if you want to, or and it, it, it date and time stamps it. So it's handy. If, the, if there's a problem at the site where it keeps going down on, on a shutdown uh, and you're not sure what shutdown it was, you can go look at the event history and, it, and it'll tell you the date and time it went down on what shutdown. The J1939 shutdown menu, or uh, yeah, menu is defaults to control on ECU. That means when we're dealing with an ECU uh, on an electronic uh, engine, the ECU or the controller will signal a shutdown on a red code. Now, if you only want the ECU to do shutdowns, in some cases that's, that's what they want, then you would choose ECU only. And in that case, the controller will show a red code being thrown by the, or broadcasted by the ECU, but it won't act on it. It's up to the ECU to do the shutdown. So that's, that's available. It defaults to controller and ECU, but you can choose ECU only. Okay, that completes our system menu. Thank you very much.